Good evening, everyone. Bonsoir. I'm Rebecca, and I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but the other day, I got the funniest letter from the CIA. Dear Professor Duclos, this is a final response to your request for records pertaining to Dr. Shaw Livermore. We did not locate any responsive records that would reveal an openly acknowledged CIA affiliation with the subject. To the extent that your request also seeks records, if any exist, that would reveal an unacknowledged or classified affiliation with the subject of your request, we can neither confirm nor deny the existence or non-existence of such records. You may consider this finding a denial of this portion of your request. Well, that was hardly neighborly, was it? The subject of my request was my maternal grandfather, Shaw Livermore. The letter came faster than I would have imagined, arriving unceremoniously in this bland envelope. Miss Rosie Monroe doesn't even get a CIA seal on her little sticker. No agency seal, but this was clearly a letter not to be tampered with. I stared at that slab of security tape for some time, and I thought, my neighbors have suddenly drawn the blinds, and I want to know why. But let me back up a bit. It's my grandfather, Shaw Livermore. By the time I was born in the late 1960s, he was a retired dean at the University of Arizona. A longtime New Englander, he would make his way back to our island cottage in Maine in the summers. My memories of him there include a lot of lobster and steamers and bear hugs before bedtime and late nights with my mother, his beloved daughter. After my mom died and long after he'd passed, I found an old CV of his from 1957. A history colleague listened patiently as I recounted some of the mysterious acronyms that I found in Shaw's resume. Staff member of the WPB, ECA Director of Programs Division, Paris, research staff member at RAND, planning board of the ODM at the NSC, White House consultant, WOC, visiting scholar, AUB, OEP consular attache, my colleague looked at me and she said, the only acronym you haven't said yet is CIA. <laughs> Not a chance, I said. My grandfather's the most ethical adult I've ever met. Exactly, winked my friend. <laughs> so I've spent months now decoding those acronyms, trying to piece together what I now realize is a classic Cold War CV. So here's what I found. Let's do it again. War Production Board, Economic Cooperation Administration, otherwise known as the Marshall Plan, Research and Development Corporation, Office of Defense Mobilization, National Security Council, Consultant Without Compensation, love that one, American University, Beirut, Office of Emergency Preparedness, that just happened to be in Thailand. <laughs> After I found that one out, my baby cup sent from Bangkok in 1967 took on a whole new meaning. I've had a lot of help along the way. Hours spent in the OSS and CIA electronic reading rooms, obituaries from the Post and the Times, online searches through the National Archives, and of course the Truman Library, where archivist Sam Ruscha's genteel southern accent would greet me on the phone whenever I called. I've assembled charts, maps, timelines, and piles of declassified memos, and for the first time in years, waited for Canada Post to deliver real mail. But just when I thought I'd closed a loop or could prove a connection, something else would come up. Some new lead or some dead end. It's as if the closer I tried to get to Shaw, the more elusive he'd become. And while it's thrilling, but just a little strange, to hold in my hands papers directly connecting my grandfather and the likes of Link Gordon, Avril Harriman, Richard Bissell, and Nelson Rockefeller, what grabs me most are the cracks within these official sources, where the tiny details are, the ones that give me little glimpses into his life. 
For example, here's a prep memo for the Geneva Summit in 1955. Shaw is on the recipient list in the White House Annex. I love his wacky John Malkovich office number of 234 and a half. <laughs> or this memo from Nelson Rockefeller. He can't make it to a national security briefing, and so he wants to send my grandfather. Someone's written no clearance in the margin. But I guess Nelson got that fixed pretty quickly. Or there's this little gem from the White House to Central Intelligence. I still don't know what role Shaw might have played on the Quantico panel. But lucky him, when the real work was happening, I found out that key lime pie, his favorite, was on the dessert menu that night. By now, it's pretty clear that Grandpa Shaw was working with figures who had, or would later have, what the CIA calls an openly acknowledged affiliation. But does that make him CIA too? And if he was, does that make me feel any differently about him? I found this photo recently. Paris, 1951, with my grandmother during the Marshall Plan years. Shaw has become my unwitting guide to aspects of a Cold War that I know so little about, but that consumed his life so intimately. It's been odd uncovering this body trail of evidence, showing parts of my grandfather's life while concealing others. It's one thing to find his papers amongst my mom's things, but it's another thing entirely to locate him within the American historical record. Recently, my friend Darian and I were talking about secret identities. There's something we're all curious about in our family histories. But, she said, unlike many of our ancestors, your grandfather seems to be hidden in plain sight. And of course she's right. There he is, and there he's not. So what of that perplexing response from Washington? If they'll neither confirm nor deny the existence or non-existence of certain affiliations, I guess that leaves my grandfather's identity open to me. The CIA knows something, but they're saying nothing. They're neither lying nor truth-telling. And strangely, that might be the most neighborly gesture anyone could ask for.